Gemar Chasim Tova, our Torah reading for Yom Kippur morning, comes from the middle of the book of Leviticus, the beginning of Parshas Achrei Mois. You'll find it in your Koran Machs or at the bottom of page 726, 727. We're invited to witness through the Torah reading a complex and multifaceted ritual of atonement, including incense, offerings, entry into the Holy of Holies, which as we know occurs only on this day out of the entire year, and the unique act of the scapegoat. After confessing his sins and those of his tribe and of the entire Jewish people, the Kohen Gadol, the high priest whose service is the central feature of Yom Kippur, sends this goat out into the wilderness, out of the temple grounds, out of the Jewish camp where it meets its fate. We see the Kohen Gadol's garments described, his changes of clothing depending on which task he's about to engage in, his mikveh immersions between each change of vestments. All this is to impress upon us the unity of the Jewish people because the Kohen Gadol is serving as a representative of all of us in carrying out God's prescribed atonement service. This is one person doing the one unique service of the day that occurs on one day a year, connecting the one Jewish people with the one God. The Haftorah for the day begins on page 738 to 739. And this Haftorah for Yom Kippur morning speaks to us from the voice of Isaiah, from two chapters late in his book. Isaiah is deeply concerned with what we call social justice, what some call in today's world tikkun olam, Another time we'll unpack that phrase, but for now, let's take very careful note that piety and fasting and praying is not the sole or the only Jewish ideal, according to what we read in this Haftorah. The Anshe Knesset Agadola, who set up the Siddur and canonized the readings, were under no illusions about the way we live our lives as Jews, and always have. They knew full well that Yom Kippur was the day when shuls were packed. It's no mystery that we have this message from Isaiah positioned as it is, right before Yizker, when the shul is as full as it's going to be. There's no underestimating our relationship with God. In fact, the entirety of this Day of Atonement is dedicated to our closeness and connection as a nation with God. Idolatry is the worst of sins. It threatens the very foundations of that relationship. However, as a prerequisite to our relationship with God, we are to have spent the preceding days seeking forgiveness from our fellow human being, confessing wrongdoing, asking pardon and reconciliation. For here on earth, God's work must truly be our own. I am crushed and humbled as God's message is here to us through the prophets. Loosen the bindings of evil and break the chain of slavery. The Torah rebukes all of humankind, especially those who would use the biblical text to justify slavery or subjugation. The Haftorah of the day calls upon us to take the humility and the teshuva and kapara of Yom Kippur out into the world the next day and the next and the next to improve the world for all its inhabitants in order to be, in the prophet's words, a mender of the ruptured wall, a restorer of paths for the living. Go there, peretz, meshovev, nesivos, lashavos. Good yamtiv.